Hello, hello YouTube. It's a little late, but it is your boy GZTV back with another video. I'm going to record this before I get, go to bed. And we are here to review the 1980 horror film produced and directed by Stanley Kubrick, uh, based on the Stephen King novel from 1977. Um, you know, it features, we have Jack Nicholson, Danny Lloyd, Shelley Duvall, and Scatman Crothers as stars. And yeah, this is a masterpiece of modern horror. You see it there. And this is a story of how isolation drove a man insane so you know we'll get to the plot we'll get to the review of it all kind of like looking at what other people said about the film and yeah let's go so getting into the plot this is a spoiler review i mean most people have probably already seen this movie already but yeah so this is follows a man named jack torrance who takes a winter caretaker position at the remote overlook hotel in the colorado rocky mountains which closes every winter season obviously you're not even able to like get there by car because of how bad snow gets in colorado in the rocky mountains especially so after his arrival uh, manager Stuart Olman advises jack that a previous caretaker charles grady killed his wife two young daughters and himself in the hotel so yeah don't let the cabin fever get to you don't let the isolation get to you and, you know, Jack kind of takes it with a grain of salt, but it's going to come back, bite him, and haunt him here. So, in Boulder, Jack's son, Danny, has a premonition and seizure. Like, he has this crazy medical emergency. Uh, Jack's wife, Wendy, tells the doctor about a past incident when Jack accidentally dislocated Danny's shoulder during a drunken rage. He, he used to be like an alcoholic. He used to have a problem. Uh, Jack has been sober ever since. Um, before leaving for the seasonal break, the Overlook's head chef... Dick Halloran informs Danny of a telepathic ability the two share, which he calls Shining, which is where the namesake of the film, The Shining, comes from. Um, Halloran tells Danny the hotel also has a shine due to residue from unpleasant past events and warns him to avoid room 237. 237. It's like a super haunted hotel. It's got some crazy history. It's a really nice looking place. It's just so many things have happened. So many like movie stars have been here corrupt shit, tragic events, all that stuff. So, a month passes and Danny starts having having frightening visions, including of two murdered sisters who look identical. Which, that scene wasn't as iconic as I thought it was going to be. Obviously, there's way more iconic scenes in the film, and there's probably a scene that everyone is thinking of right now when you think of the movie The Shining. Here's Johnny. We'll get to that eventually. Uh, meanwhile, Jack's mental health deteriorates. Uh, he gets nowhere with his writing, is prone to violent outbursts, and has dreams of killing his family. Uh, yeah, obviously, like writer's block. There's a lot of things that are talked about here. I mean, um, Stephen King and his books often wrote about, you know, events that are, are stories based on, like, an author, you know. Um, he, he wants to find, like, sympathy with writers, you know, and stuff like that. And this is about... This is one's about writer's block. You know, you have Misery, which is about, like, super fans and stands and all this stuff. It's really cool uh, how Stephen King incorporates some of these concepts of being a famous writer. Damn near one of the best writers of all time. And, yeah, it's, it's awesome to see him implement that in his actual stories. I think it's really cool. He does it here again. So Danny gets lured to room 237 by unseen forces, and Wendy later finds him with signs of physical trauma. There's, like, bruises on his neck and whatnot. So Jack investigates and encounters a female ghost in the room, but blames Danny for inflicting the bruises on himself. He actually sees something, but he's like, oh, no, fuck you, son. Like, it's a pretty shitty dude. I mean, I mean, yeah, he's taking his emotions out for the writer's block, but he does seem like kind of an asshole dad, to be honest. There's a lot of signs kind of pointing at that. So Jack is enticed back to drinking by the ghostly bartender Lloyd. Uh, ghostly figures including Delbert Grady then begin appearing in the gold room and it's this crazy hallucination. Obviously he is just completely lost his mind and yeah. Grady informs Jack that Danny has telepathically contacted Halloran for assistance and says that Jack must correct his wife and child. They're like questioning his authority, calling for help, doing all this crazy shit. And as like a prideful man and having these male traits, it's kind of like a, how could you do this? How dare you? You know, so he's going to get retaliation through obviously attempting to murder them, which is what happened with the last uh, caretaker of this place. So Wendy finds Jack's manuscript written with nothing but countless repetitions of all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. 
Um, so when Jack threatens her life, Wendy knocks him unconscious with a baseball bat and locks him in the kitchen pantry. But she and Danny cannot leave due to Jack having previously sabotaged the hotel's two-way radio and snowcat. And he's kind of realizing what's going on. He's realizing, you know, his family's starting to kind of turn on him. So he decides to take matters into his own hands and just fucking ruin everything and, and make it so... Even if they come to an agreement, even if they like each other, they still can't fucking escape. There's just so much pride that gets in the way of this Jack Torrance character, played by the wonderful Jack Nicholson, which is obviously, this is one of his bigger movies, of course, and probably one of the first big movies he's gotten his name from, obviously. But, um... Yeah, so back in their hotel room, Danny says red rum repeatedly, and even writes the word in lipstick on the bathroom door... And Wendy sees the word in the mirror and realizes that it's actually murder spelled backward. And actually, as an audience, as I was watching this film, I was kind of confused to what they were getting at with this word. And then I kept hearing him say it. I actually watched with subtitles. I know you can, like, roast me in the comments if you want. But uh, on subtitles, I was looking at it. I was like, wow, that's just murder backwards. And she looks at the mirror and it says murder. There's so many great cinematic uh kind of elements and components to this film and i will get to that in the review this movie is damn near spot on i think it's one of the more perfect one of the closest to perfect i've seen a horror film definitely a slasher film uh achieve obviously i can't really call it that much of a slasher film because he only killed one person anyway yeah um and this movie is a damn masterpiece. It's one of the best i've watched on the channel If, if you guys want a sneak peek of my review i have really high opinions regards on this movie so jack is freed by grady and goes after wendy and danny with an axe danny escapes outside through the bathroom window and wendy fights jack off with the knife when he tries to break through the door so halloran having flown back to colorado from his florida vacation respond to danny's telepathic sos you know through the shining uh reaches the hotel in another snowcat so wow how ironic is that another snowcat shows up uh, his arrival distracts Jack, who ambushes and murders him in the lobby. It doesn't even matter who the fuck this guy is. Like, Jack has lost it. He's in a fit of rage, and whoever's getting in his way is getting killed here. You know, It's kind of fucked up, because Halloran was a really nice character, and he did not deserve to die. It was kind of fucked. So, yeah. So he murders him in the lobby, then pursues Danny into the hedge maze. Wendy runs through the hotel looking for Danny, encountering the hotel's ghost and a vision of cascading blood similar to Danny's premonition, which is such a sick scene, such great shots and directing and all that. Stanley Kubrick is a great director. Um, The ghosts are really cool. It makes for, like, the final sequences are probably some of the best of the film. I think it makes for a very entertaining uh, third act. Um, So, in the hedge maze, Danny misleads Jack and hides behind a snowdrift while Jack follows a false trail. Uh, Danny and Wendy reunite and leave in Halloran's snowcat, leaving Jack to freeze to death in the maze. Um, so, yeah, he kind of freezes to death. And In a photograph in the hotel hallway, Jack is pictured standing amidst a crowd of party revelers from July 4th, 1921. So I guess this whole time, it's kind of like this big reveal towards the end of the film. It doesn't really hit as hard as it probably should. I was kind of tuned out of the film, not going to lie at this point. Not because I was, like, bored of it and it's like, oh, it's trash. It's just, okay, like... You know, it's almost two and a half hours. I don't know if I can really do long movies like that. And, yeah, I saw that. I was like, okay. I mean, that's cool. He has connections to the hotel beforehand. I guess that's kind of a cool little wrap-up. And they've made, you know, prequels, spinoffs, all sorts of things for this franchise because there's so much to explain. You know, I, I, I reviewed Doctor Sleep on this channel earlier this year. So, yeah, those were needed, I guess, for that whole weird reveal at the end. But... With that being said, let's just get into the review. So, getting into the reviews, I'm going to be reading critics from the modern day because this movie has gotten over 40 years to kind of age on people. Um, And yeah, this is a fucking fantastic movie. Again, like I said, this is one of the best movies I've seen on this channel. Uh, Though it deviates from Stephen King's novel, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining is a chilling, often baroque journey into madness, exemplified by an unforgettable turn from Jack Nicholson. Absolutely fantastic performance from everybody. This is how a Hollywood movie should go. Um, Yeah, I mean... Like, damn near 10... Like, people didn't really like this film as much at first, but, like, 10 years went by and people were like, okay, yeah, this is a good-ass film. We're going back to it, we're reevaluating it, like... Yeah, this is going to be on plenty of lists for one of the best movies of all time. Definitely one of the best horror movies of all time. 
uh, Jack Torres, Torrance, one of the best horror villains ever, and horror, or villains just in any movie. I mean, the who's jo- here's Johnny quote is still one of the most iconic things to ever happen in a movie. Uh, so many scary moments, so many lists, um, just all that stuff. I mean, yeah. Um, you know, I don't know. People people had time for this to grow on them. But on first watch, I really, really liked this. Um, it's amazing. I mean, Stanley Kubrick's cold and frightening The Shining challenges us to decide. Who is the reliable observer? Whose idea of events can we trust? It is this elusive open-endedness endedness that makes Kubrick's film so strangely disturbing. It, it's really interesting. Uh, Duval's performance was great. Um, for worst actress, she was init- initially nominated for that, but they took it back. A lot of crazy things have happened to this film. This film has a big history in, in Hollywood and the film industry. Uh, you know, you know, people soon discovered that Duval's performance was impacted by Stanley Kubrick's treatment of her throughout the production. So that that was interesting. Uh, crazy ass shit going on. Um. There was a Blu-ray release, people talked about that. Just as the ghostly apparitions of the film's fictional Overlook Hotel would play tricks on the mind of poor Jack Torrance, so too as the passage of time changed the perception of The Shining itself. Many of the same viewer reviewers who lambasted the film for not being scary enough back in 1980 now rank it among the most effective horror films ever made, while audiences who hated the film back then now vividly recall being terrified by the experience. The Shining has somehow risen from the ashes of its own bad press to redefine itself, not only as a seminal work of the genre, but perhaps the most stately, artful horror ever made. Like, yeah, I can't praise this movie enough. I think it's it's just absolutely phenomenal. Like, if you haven't watched this movie, I don't know why it took me so long. I think I just, like, saw the length of the film and I was like, nah, I don't know if I want to do this right now. But it was on my Scratch It poster, so shout out to Scratch It for making me do that. Uh, Kubrick's profession, perfectionism and, um, you know... I don't know, this this film definitely doesn't lack complexity like some people say. The final scene alone demonstrates what a rich source of perplexity The Shining offers. Look beyond the simplicity and the Overlook reveals itself as a palace of paradox. Uh, the, domina- the, the dominating presence of the Overlook Hotel, designed by Roy Walker as a composite of American hotels visited in the course of research, is an extraordinary vindication of the value of Miss A and Scene. It's a real complex space that we don't just see, but come to virtually inhabit. The confinement is palpable. Horror cinema is in an art of claustrophobia, making us loathe to stay in the cinema, but unable to leave, because it's just so interesting. Uh, yet it's combined with a sort of agoraphobia. We are as frightened of the hotel's cavernous vastness as of its corridors and closures. The film sets up a complex dynamic between simple domesti- domesticity and magnificent grandeur, between the supernatural and the mundane, in which the viewer is disoriented by the combination of spaciousness and confinement, and an uncertainty as to just what is real or not, what is a hallucination, what is not. What a crazy world. I mean, Stephen King does it well in his books, but Stanley Kubrick, to just bring this to life in such an effective way, I gotta commend him on that. I think it's absolutely incredible that he was able to pull that off. At any anyway, this is a fantastic film. Um, shit, I don't even know if I talked about it enough. Like, it, it's so good. I mean, I, I kind of had some pretty high expectations, and still, it was just exceeded. I, I'm happy I watched this. Uh, yeah, this should definitely be in some Hall of Fame somewhere. I mean, just an incredible movie. You guys have got to watch this if you haven't already. I mean, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what I've been doing for all these years, but yeah. Have a good rest of your night. I'm out. Peace to everybody.